Developmental Stages in Middle Childhood School Age Children Children develop concrete operational skills during middle childhood. This theory was developed by Jean Piggott in 1947. Concrete operational skills focus on mental activities and real and tangible objects. During this stage, children learn to focus on more than one issue or object at once. For example, they can distinguish between objects, quantity, and special features. They can see the same objects and situations from multiple views and perspectives. They can notice how one thing can change its properties and appearance, yet recognize the continuous aspects of the object or situation. Children in middle childhood start to learn how to add and subtract, arrange different patterns chronologically, and have a greater sense of time. They start to recognize familiar places and certain landmarks visited frequently. Their constant interactions with the environment influences their progress and development. The information processing theory focuses on how children process and store information. By storing in the working memory and retrieving information from external signals and previously stored data from their environment, they can recall memories with little help or reminders and can remain focused in hectic situations due to selective attention. School-age children are also able to perceive certain characteristics while masking or hiding others. Skills such as letter combinations and word and pattern recognition allow school-age children to develop language and intelligence. They can recognize language as a cognitive process rather than a simple utility. School-age children start to understand school as a place to learn and integrate knowledge to develop their skills and language. The psychometric approach focuses on estimating abilities and attainment. This is how children develop assumptions regarding their understanding and progress. School-age children are subject to standardized testing that evaluates their performance on a regular basis. This is done using achievement tests that measure a child's overall skills and knowledge. They are even subject to aptitude tests performed by higher educational institutes that measure their future abilities and academic achievements. Acquiring skills in mathematics, reading, and writing is rooted in building competence in thinking, planning, and evaluating for the future. The triadic theory of intelligence. Eventually, children will have to learn how to effectively engage and respond to new experiences and problems. At this stage, they learn about failure and different ways to cope in certain situations. The context and how children choose environments that are supportive and protective of their needs are important. Every child has different levels of ability. Some are well above average and others are more average. Those who are above average demonstrate task commitment, showing increased initiative and eagerness. They are also more creative, not afraid to give input, and are open-minded. Dr. Howard Gardner's theory suggests that there are multiple types of intelligence. They range from language skills, musical skills, spatial skills, the ability to get around, kinesthetic body balancing skills, interpersonal skills, understanding others, feelings, interpersonal skills, understanding your own feelings, and naturalistics who can identify different plants and animals in the natural environment. Social cultural approach. Lev Rudolsky developed the social cultural approach, which believes intelligence is cultivated through relationships and experiences with other individuals. He refers to this as the zone of proximal development, where children learn how to solve problems with the assistance of an older, more skilled person. This type of learning can be obtained through participation structures, usually found in classroom settings and relationships. Within these environments, Children can be assessed and evaluated based on their overall progress while being trained one-on-one. -on -one. With an introduction to new environments such as school, children may experience psychosocial challenges during their school years. They face challenges such as self-knowledge, 
challenges in achieving family issues challenges making friends and challenges academically having a good sense of their experiences helps children develop a unique sense of self children may question whether others like them or even their abilities middle childhood brings on challenges and feelings of competence and having enough confidence to achieve this is influenced by a greater sense of other thoughts other thoughts and emotions Challenges within their families and homes can influence individuals' overall sense of self. Changes in responsibilities at home and financial and personal difficulties can bring on feelings of inadequacy. Challenges with peers in school also bring on psychosocial problems. At the same time, interactions with peers in school increase a child's opportunity to learn and form social relationships that help develop their identity and sense of self. The sense of self is a way that a child sees themselves that helps them develop and understand their values and experiences surrounding issues such as gender and race. The child's sense of self or self-concept progresses during middle childhood and is mainly constructed and updated by the child based on different stages in their life. A child may love pink during preschool and despise that color during middle school and only wear black. One day in the distant future, both interests may be consolidated into an individual identity. During early childhood, a child could recognize themselves if shown their inflection and by the age of two can label themselves as a person able to distinguish whether they are a boy or a girl. By the age of six, children develop self-constancy where they acknowledge that their identity is established and unchangeable. By the age of eight, they develop a more stable sense of self, stating things such as, I'm helpful with friends, or I'm happy, although believing this is a constant state. It is not until the end of middle childhood that children notice they can be a few things such as helpful in many ways. Children also develop a sense of self based on their parents, teachers, and peers' own emotional and psychological needs. The latency and crisis industry, industry and achievement, which occurs between the ages of 6 to 12, is the period in which children spend the most time in school learning different skills and gaining multiple achievements. Here is why, where they learn how to interact with others and where they spend the most time. During the same time of this crisis of industry, children also are going through a crisis of latency, which is a period where a child's unresolved issues go hidden until a later date. Sigmund Freud suggests this latency period is a time around five years old through adolescence when feelings towards parents such as intimacy um, with the opposite sex parent and competition with the same sex parent become hidden. During this latency period, children become absorbed in learning and skill building as a protection against these feelings towards their parents. They go through an identification period where they see themselves imitating their parents to gain identification and appreciation from others. They become over concerned with their capabilities and productivity, which helps them gain a healthier self image and self concept. When this is not accomplished, children tend to suffer from lower self-esteem. Most children end up with a combination of both self-confidence and feelings of inadequacy. The child's environment is the main source of support for fostering individual identity, promoting critique and challenges. It reinforces positive performance and behavior schedules for time management and motivation. The attitude of culture and society influence levels of achievement. The family's involvement in assisting with assignments, their reaction to the child's assessments, and the family's overall parenting style determines the achievement and motivation level of the child. Authoritative parenting styles are more supportive in, of increasing motivation and higher grades in school. The more comfortable children are with their parents' perspectives and their rationale for their rules, they can reg the more they can regulate their actions and emotions. Family, peer, school, and social economic issues. Issues such as divorce, employment, and unemployment have on children and families during childhood school age increases the likelihood of loss of social support, mental distress, periods of tension, and conflict.
Children rely on their parents for a sense of identity and to role model ways in which to behave. Divorce and unemployment or overemployment threaten the sense of safety found in the family, making developing independence more difficult for children. If parents learn to develop skills that help reduce their conflict and promote cooperation after divorce, they can have positive interactions with their children. Authoritative parenting is best, displaying maladaptive behaviors such as arguing, criticizing, contempt, defensiveness, silent treatment, hostility, or creating distance are all related to higher rates of anxiety and social behaviors in middle school age children. Other social supports such as after school care, siblings, grandparents, and family pets all provide companionship, friendship, and social support besides the parents. After school programs are associated with higher grades and better peer interactions and emotional regulation. Children are exposed to more enriching activities that help to keep them busy and out of trouble. Older siblings act as role models and mentors to their younger siblings while teaching them family values and ways to engage with their peers. Grandparents and pets provide additional companionship and comfort. Most children also develop special hobbies such as playing instruments or engaging in sports to help them manage stress and negative emotions without their families being involved. Peer relations play a major function in overcoming egocentricism, according to Jean Piggott. It, in conflict resolution with peers, children learn how to value different opinions. Harry Stack Sullivan argued that peer relationships are different from adult relationships in middle childhood. Having peers develop skills such as compromise, cooperation, competition, and emotional health. Peers also give children a chance to develop a sense of self separate from their families. An emotional warp is when a child recognizes that biases held by the family are not universally held by beliefs by others. Children usually develop a small group of friends that share the same age, gender, and race or culture as them. Peer relationships involve horizontal and symmetric engagement where individuals are equal in knowledge, competence, and social status. Popularity and rejection affects a child's motivation, social behavior, and cooperation. Jigsaw techniques in magnet schools are specialized programs that foster a variety of ethnic and cultural backgrounds to help foster diversity, reduce prejudice, and increase self-esteem. Popularity leads to pro-social behavior, increased cooperation, and higher degrees of interpersonal skills. Unpopularity can bring on feelings of rejection, which are disturbing and can lead to acts of aggression. Feelings of rejection can lead to immaturity, academic problems, shyness, anxiety, low self-esteem, depression, and victimization. Children who fit this category of rejection have fewer aspirations for achievement, lower levels of participation, and limited social involvement. Teachers play a significant role in child's development due to the proximity and frequency of engagement with children. They are the ones who form the types of learning environments the children are in. School environments are usually welcoming, peaceful, and predictable, creating clear expectations for growing children. This establishes an environment where children can engage in interpersonal interactions with their peers while transitioning to different activities. All these groups and individuals play an important part in the development of school-aged children, especially when experiencing difficult feelings and emotions. Losing friends and family is difficult for school-aged children. Grieving involves emotional and psychological reactions to the loss. Children need to understand the loss, whether it is a loss of friendship or loss of life. The implications of such loss is they do not understand the loss, they will reenact different elements of the event in their heads. They will try to fill in the missing pieces themselves and might even distort the facts, deny the events, or become numb to the pain as a way not to fail.
Eventually, after feeling the pain of the loss, the children would have to renew their identification with the deceased or person no longer in their life. In conclusion, as a child develops a deeper understanding of who they are and what makes them different, they will acquire several skills and experiences to help them fully understand themselves and their environment. Without a nurturing environment and an authoritative learning environment, the child is subject to developing increased anxiety and depression later in adulthood. Parents who approach their children with kindness, firmness, and encouragement have children who are intrinsically motivated and have less rates of anxiety and depression.